Welcome back to the ESP Shock Therapy Cup here on Beyond the Summit. We've got our last best of three for the day. Coming at you live, Team E-Hug versus Speed Gaming. Not quite an all NA Dota showdown, but we've got uh, E-Hug, North America's greatest hope. Maybe not quite yet, but hopefully <laughs> soon. Uh, the, the young upstarts from North America who have shown promise, but not yet proven that they can compete at the top level. Up against Speed Gaming, a team who's beaten the best and then also lost to some... In, l in some less than impressive ways, I think yes, we can say that. That, that is a, an artistic way to put it, LD. E they've though, thrown. They've thrown. They've, they've made I questionable item decisions, but every good top team has done it at times. Yeah, so certainly. Well, can they just deliver and take the series? We'll find out. Yeah. I would say, for me, it's like 75-25, maybe 80-20 in favor of speed. And yeah. I'm going to check the Dota 2 lounge odds as well. And Dota 2 lounge says... 77-23, so I pretty much agree with those. Yeah, I, I would agree as well. I think speed, safe to say, the heavy favorites going in. But let's take a look at this draft. Let's do it. E-Hug, first pick Chen. Now, one of the things that I wanted to say about E-Hug is even though they're not an established team yet, they're still a very new roster, they're kind of a wild card right now, and they have the skills to pay the bills. Yeah, their individual skills definitely there. Ryu Boris, for me, has been the most individually impressive player on this team, but... Uh, MSS also had a really strong, I think it was Luna performance yesterday for the joint Dota League. I only caught some of one of those games. I really like this opening from eHug. Speed Gaming loves to run Luna Chen. They do it all the time. And, well, you can't, you can't really justify banning these heroes. But what you can do is just first pick the Chen. Counters Luna pretty well through the mid game. The, the can of God as well as the creeps will tank Eclipse damage and can push early, and Luna, although she's a good pusher, is not good at defending pushes directly. So I do like the Chen pick quite a bit, and I am curious to see where they go from here. Yeah, we saw in the series previous how that first pick Luna can backfire just a little bit. She's a hero that needs some room, and if you draft accordingly, you can punish that first pick Luna. Though Speed going to go ahead and second pick Visage, so they're off to a, a pretty solid draft. Both of those heroes have been in high demand over the past few days in this tournament. And for good reason. Yeah, MSS has played quite a bit of his own Luna. Won't be here this game. We've seen Cakes on Clockwork offlane. We've seen him on Timbersaw as well. I'm not sure what they're going to run this time around. Uh, in terms of supports out there, Bane is available. Uh, pretty good against Visage. Uh, pretty good against Luna as well. Uh, can we're dual roam effective with, with Chen, but... Wow. That would be two supports in the first stage, and they'll right. go more well-rounded. They go Dragonite Chen. If you're speed gaming, probably want to ban Pugna in this phase. Uh, Death Prophet's already gone, so I think mostly they just need to ban Pugna, and then whatever they want to do from there is fine. We usually see uh, Dragonite later on in a draft, almost always, I think, fourth or fifth picked. Uh, seeing him second picked is a little bit different, but uh, assuming he's going mid, who would you want to grab to deal with a Dragonite? OD's fantastic. Um, really? See, I think of Dragonite as a hero that does well against OD relative to most other heroes. Well, the uh, Dragonite will still get his levels, and he could still be useful later on, but OD will get free farm in that lane 1v1. Mm -hmm. uh, OD isn't good at stopping pushes, though. That is the one concern. Shadow Fiend's probably the better matchup, okay. because Shadow Fiend can win the lane handily and stop pushes pretty well with his raises, so... I think SF would be a pretty strong pick here. Yeah. Uh, Dragon Knight also doesn't do well against Timbersaw, uh, so that's a smart ban. Strength hero against Timbersaw, uh, just going to get outfarmed in lane generally. Yeah. They both get levels, but it's definitely a Timbersaw flavored lane. So mm -hmm. I think if they're not going to ban Shadow Fiend, they should be prepared to punish it with a lot of early to mid game aggression. And that is kind of how Speed likes to play. You see a lot of Luna, Shadow Fiend. Uh, for Sing Sing, he doesn't play that much SF, but it, he's definitely capable of it. Uh, they were running it more when Arteezy was standing in for the team. But. Mm -hmm. Hmm, if they don't go for that, he likes to play Kunkka, Marana's still in the pool. Yeah. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, to be honest. All right, and Marana Bane is still available, and Speed have not been super crazy about that combo. They're just fine with a solo Marana, but Bane wouldn't be a bad second support to pair with this Visage if that's the route they wanted to go. E-Hug could have drafted themselves into a little bit of a corner if that's something that Speed are considering. Yeah, Bane doesn't have much AoE, so he's not good at stopping pushes, but he is good setup if they just want to go for ganks with Luna. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, with Visage as well as Marana, potentially. So, As for Bone7, for me, he's in the past he's been the workhorse that really carries this team. 
His bat's really solid. We've seen a re bit of resurgence in bat rider play. Mainly, Empire has continued to run it. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen it too much for them. Clockwork's also available. Uh, probably one of those two for boat seven. He doesn't really play much like farming off lane. We don't really see him on profit or lone druid or anything like that. So right, Crystal Maiden going to be the third pick for speed gaming. So they won't go for the bane that I was thinking about. You really can't go wrong with a CM pick. Strong disable that mana aura. Really a hero that needs no introduction. And we'll hmm. see how E Hug want to react here. Pugna's still available. Speed did not ban it, so. Looking at Speed's draft, there's still not much AoE counter push, and they're they're vulnerable to yeah. What what Speed likes to do when teams run push strats against them is avoid engaging as long as possible. So they'll go for trades, they'll split push the other two lanes with familiars with Luna. It's not like they can't deal with it, but it's still difficult, and especially with E Hug on Dire. If they take early towers, they'll have the Roche Edge, and if they get an Aegis at the right moment, they could snowball from there. They now go Bane. Again, good against Luna, good against Visage, can brain set familiars, can yeah. sleep the Luna, and set up something like an arrow, so maybe we see them go Mirana next. Very possible, if Speed Gaming don't take it here, and I imagine with that Bane pick, they're considering it. But we'll see. So hard to say exactly how this draft is going to unfold. I mean, Ehug do have a lot of other pushers available. Uh, Furion as well as Pugna are still in the pool. Yeah, they could go Furion. He's he's fairly easy for those heroes on speed to kill. Yeah. And Nyx has been banned out, so that is good news. Uh, but it will be Sensei Marana. Yep. Oh, boy. Smart choice here. This is a block pick, I think, as much as a... Yeah. I don't know that they really wanted Marana this game. Because if they did, they would have gone Bane yeah. first. Uh, they're just better synergy there. But it's still a good pick. Yeah, I think they'll be okay with just uh, the, the straight Marana. Signature it's Sing Sing, Sing hero. Man. He's going to yeah. hit arrows anyway. Hit arrow. No, shoot arrow, hit arrow. Win game. Yes. And then kill shit too. And, and yeah. buy a Mask of Madness and a Basher. <laughs> Somewhere in there. Somewhere between those questions. Somewhere marks, in there is the essence of Sing Sing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, E Hug, they will take their time. going to break into the bonus time. And there's the Nature's Prophet that we were talking about. So, obviously, a lot of push coming out for E Hug. And again, that Nyx Assassin banned out by speed makes that a little bit more of a tempting pick. Yeah, Prophet, Dragon Knight. Mm, I wonder what this last pick is going to be. They they could go Pugna, like I mentioned earlier. Speed still don't have that much AoE. I think they really want to ban Clockwork, though. Ehug, do not want to give away Clock. He's already first banned by Ehug. Oh, jeez. I'm blind. Okay, yeah. I was going to say, you definitely don't want to give him away now. If you, if you want to run a Pugna okay. or a Bane, Clockwork shits on those heroes, but no Clock, so. Yeah. Forget I said that. We'll strike it from the record, LD. Consider it stricken. That never happened, guys, I swear. <laughs> Rather slow draft here. And uh, oh, a lifesteal or final ban from speed. So uh, not a bad choice here. He does pair well with that Nature's Prophet. Those uh, infest bombs makes him a little bit more mobile with that global teleport presence. Uh, maybe they were considering a lifestealer here. Mm, yeah, lifestealers, I don't know. I think I think speed's lineup was still decent against lifestealer. Luna's just aura makes you can just right click him. They have Marana to kite him a bit, and familiars do a lot of physical damage. So I don't think Life Stealer yeah. was that scary, but they, they don't want to deal with it. Yeah. I I probably would have banned Pugna. Yeah, but I just hate playing against Pugna DK. It's really annoying. Yeah, that's almost almost feels like overkill push compared to what they have. Like they've already got Nature's Prophet, Dragonite, and Chen. I guess Pugna could just be that icing on the cake. You're already pretty much committed to an all-in push strat. Might as well go mm. all all-in with a Pugna, I suppose. Is there anything unorthodox? Mm, Lycan? Yeah. Lycan's been receiving some buffs. We saw, was it, I think it was it Sad was, Boys experimenting with it? It was EE. No, remember it was that EE. Oh, no, it was Speed Gaming. Eternal uh, Envy played the Lycan. Didn't go well. No, that that's an understatement. It was and a And I don't think it would go, you know, sadly, I don't think it would go well this game either, Andrew, because they, Speed Gaming's lanes are quite strong, so yeah, going Lycan is very risky. And I, th was was it a game where when they picked Lycan, there was also a Chen, and that was part of the problem, where Chen was occupying the jungle when Lycan was trying to find some recovery yeah, farm. Yeah, and they have Prophet, who may need to resort to the jungle. Yeah, so, sadly... That's probably not the best choice. Sadly, no Lycan, but... Would have been interesting. Both mm. teams thinking very hard here. It will be a puck final pick for speed. Interesting so, choice. 
it's normally Bone 7 who plays the puck, especially when they have Murano. And I guess the main question is, do they switch up the lanes? Once in a while, Saint Saint will go off lane, but normally it's just an off lane puck and then Saint Saint solo mid. Yeah, and I think they can feel a little bit more safe doing this, knowing that Chen will be in the jungle. That opens up the lanes a little bit and makes um, you know that puck off lane a little bit more desirable compared to an environment where you'd be up against an aggressive try. Yeah, I'm just wondering what else is out there. Hmm. What else could he hug do? Maybe like Slark? Slark could be alright. Yeah, Slark could work here. There's there's no obvious choice. The Clinks gyro. was maybe an option as well. Cl I think Clinks would have been okay, but mm -hmm. they're going to go Gyro. And Speed Gaming did agree to play on US East, but they only if they get a decent server So, uh, for all three games. So we're going to have a quick remake, and hopefully we'll find a server that is suitable. All right. Um, and Master of Production, is, is this a camera cut here, or what? Uh... Whatever your heart tells you. Oh. The, the lobby's up, by the way. Oh, jeez. Whatever my heart tells me. Okie dokie. Hopefully it should just be a, a quick one. So last pick, Gyro. <coughs> hmm. Their five man's pretty strong in the mid game. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, Gyro does... He he works here. I, I Now that I, now that you said Clinks, I sort of have my heart set on Clinks almost as a, a pick that would have been been pretty solid, but Gyro should be okay. I mean, call down is good Clink, for creep clearing. Clink, Clinks is really good against Puck, because you can just yeah. easily zone him out of lane 1v1. And Marana, if either of those heroes goes off lane, they're going to lose. So. Right. And speed, generally, the, you don't like see them go aggressive try lane almost ever. So. No. And with a Chen, that's pretty much off the table. Uh, well, oh, the Chen's actually on E-Hug. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? Both these teams like their Chen. Yeah, both these teams like their Chen. That's what I was thinking. So Gyrocopter will work pretty well here, I think. But we'll see. We're having some uh, lobby issues here. Some some debate about servers, or uh, apparently we have some uh, guest casters here in the in the sixth broadcast slot. I'm just going right away before they have a chance to to cause problems. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not envious of your uh, administrative uh, duties here. Like I said, being an admin is thankless work. It's rough. And all you can do is piss people off. Yeah, you really or, suck Or lose, not lose. piss people off, but it's never like, man, he sure was a great admin. I <laughs> love that guy. <laughs> uh, so, all right, let's hop to our in-game here. And, of course, it is a quick AP. Assuming there are no lag issues, we should be able to hop right into our first match of this best of three series between Speed Gaming and E-Hug. Again, worth reiterating, folks, this is an elimination series. The loser of the series will be going home empty-handed and we can glance at the brackets very quickly here as we wait for that match to load in we are right here and actually maybe we could do an old old refresh as uh, that empire fanatic series has been has been completed nope hasn't been updated yet but uh, obviously empire did win that series and this is where we're at in the bracket and tomorrow ld we only have one best of three if that's correct losers round yes. three Empire versus the winner of this series will be what we're covering tomorrow. And it starts at the same time, 6 p.m. CET, which is 9 a.m. Pacific time. Yes. Uh, noon Eastern time. Yes. So if everyone's recovered from the Super Bowl, they can watch some Dota. Oh, it's Super Bowl Sunday. I forgot. Yeah. Happy Super Bowl Sunday, everybody. Woo! What is it? Seahawks versus Niners? Are we going to bet some rares? Are we going to get a pool going? Can we get, like, BTS bets on... No, no, no. It's Seahawks versus Broncos. They're in the same Is They're it? in the same conference, the 49ers. And I'm, the... I'm showing my ignorance towards uh, North American football. He he grew up in Philly, and he's not an Eagles fan. You know, like, Zayori is the biggest fraud I... that's ever lived. My dad's a Giants fan, and I know that pains you um, to hear, but... Um... You know, well, at least we, we it, can't all be good people. See what what's what's better: be a Giants fan or just defect from everything and say, you know what, I'm done with football. That's De a, that's defect a tough from one. Everything. See, see, there you go. So I, I took the lesser of two evils. But they're still pretty bad. They're still pretty bad. The only right answer is to be an Eagles fan. An Eagles fan. All right. And suffer and suffer and, and suffer, suffer. Some more. Through masochism comes. Well, now that they're done with Andy Reid, maybe I could hop back aboard the Eagles bandwagon. But I had enough of God Andy Reid. That Andy, guy. No, no more Andy is a good good times. 
That me. guy, yeah. I, I'm not even that into football, and I recognize how ridiculous he was. He had a really good run, but it was time to get rid of the yeah. Good old, good old Andy. Good, good. Big old. Red, as they call him. <laughs> Big Red. We wish him happy, happy journeys. And this year, the Eagles Kansas were stinking City. in the Lincoln LD. No, they turned it around though. They had a good end of the season. I just wanted to say stinking in the Lincoln. That's one of my <laughs> favorite Philadelphia phrases. I've never heard that one before. You never. You call yourself an Eagles fan, and you've that's never heard like that. That's just like you and your friends' expression. That's not like a <laughs> no. To. That's like a thing. I read it on the internet once. You know, the Lincoln Financial, stinking. It's just because people say it on the internet doesn't mean it's a real thing it's in not real a thing. life. All right, fine, fine, fine. I have been to that Lincoln Stadium, though. It's a nice stadium. There you go. Oh, game one. Game one. We are resumed, and hopefully uh, limited pause slash lag issues here in this match. As our last series was plagued with with an array of, of connection issues. And um, Game one, yeah. Underway now. So we're going to see offlane puck, pretty standard for speed, very unusual for other teams. Saints team will get the mid-roll as Marana. And this is where, like, if they had gone clinks, he can just crap all over the puck. Gyro will do fine, but he's not going to be able to zone him out as easily. And even if you sleep into a Gyro rocket barrage, puck can always just orb away. So as long as Bone7 doesn't waste his orb, he should get a lot out of the offlane. Cakes will have a harder time in the lane. But he can go jungle. But if he goes jungle, then speed will take the tower. So in terms of the side lanes, I'm liking it a bit better the for speed begins. so far. Yeah, I, I would agree. E-Hug are going to be the ones that have to make the plays happen in the mid game. They've got this pushing lineup, and they're going to have to knock down towers and do some crippling damage. Uh, because, well, I mean, there isn't a huge carry disparity, but that is uh, the strategy that their team relies on. They don't have the strongest lanes compared to speed. And that power uh, is in the pushing. Cake's going to be in the bottom lane on the Nature's Prophet and going to be flying solo. In the mid, Ryu Bora is going to be on the Dragonite up against Sing Sing's Marana. And that means up top it will be a solo gyrocopter for now being played by MSS. It's going to be supported by I'm a Sheep on the Bane. And of course, Pandago left on the Chen, who is jungling defensively on the dire side of the map. And uh, E-Hug on the... Or Excuse me, uh, on speed gaming side, we have Puck on the off lane being handled by Bone7. Sing Saint, your solo mid Marana. Pylai Diet, the support Crystal Maiden. AUI 2000, the support Visage. And Eternal Envy, I'm crumbling oh. on the Luna. By the way, I do want to point out Nature's Prophet dropped a sentry right as the creep wave arrived. D warded a lane ward over here, so very well done by him. And he's also been sending in a barrage of trance, but he did miss blocking the first spawn. And. Triant blocking camps is not very effective against Crystal Maiden because she can just farm the woods anyway. Mm -hmm. So I don't yeah. think this Prophet's going to get much done and would like to see him go jungle fairly soon. Yeah, he's certainly off to a rough start. And even having to share the jungle with Chen will make it a little bit more difficult. There is a ward down uh, in this hard camp over here from the Radiant side that is blocking it. So that will limit some of the jungle sharing that can come about when Furion wants to rotate into the jungle. Yeah, and they do have a Chen in there, which is the, the other tough yeah. part. So. The other big problem. It's in demand, the woods. <laughs> in terms of the yeah. solo matchups, Saint Saint started with a Wraith Band, and even though Miranda doesn't have the best base damage, she's arranged here against a melee, so Saint Saint going to have a good time against Ryu Boras until he gets the bottle crow and just keeps on spamming it. But he should have better rune control. Puck offlane is good at scouting runes, and they're running defensive trialing, so e going to have a pretty hard time securing runes. Yes, I think that's absolutely true. As Puck postures uh, for that two-minute rune spawn up top, it will be an illusion down bottom. And actually, Cakes will be the one to grab it on the side of E-Hug, though not the most devastating of runes here at the two-minute mark. Yeah, that's if the supports want to go scout it, but they're content just to get a lot out of the woods. Mm -hmm. And Pilot Eye, already level two, point in the Aura. Things are going pretty well for him. The one hero who's having an okay time is Bone7. He scouted the two-minute rune top, but it wasn't there, and now he's just coming towards mid. Pretty... I mean, he's been spotted by this Dire Ward, and it's also just really early for Puck to be off on yeah, his own. Uh, now Bone7 in a little bit of trouble. Thunderclap used. He will phase shift, hop to the orb, and he will survive, though. Opening up room in that top lane. MSS picking up free farm, and more importantly, Bone7 not getting experience right now. I'm not sure exactly what his plan is. Might have wanted to go mess with the Chen and Leech experience from the jungle, but Pandago did a really good job of guarding the hill. Yeah. And... Well, for the time being, Bone7's not getting too much done. Yeah. Like Puck, Puck is not a good early roamer yeah. off, from the offlane. Needs levels, needs farm, and doesn't yeah. do much until he has them. 
Yeah, and he really just doesn't do much damage until you hit that level 7, level 8 mark. At least you have the points in orb. That waning rift starts actually acting like a silence those first few levels. Not here too comes potent. a smoke yank from Pandago. The other thing he could be doing is just trying to scout smokes. Yeah, But Marana's not easy here to gank mid, so I don't think that's too likely. Now Bone 7 in trouble. He does have an orb as well as a phase shift as Ryu Borez starts to initiate. Pandago rotates out from the jungle. No kill secured quite yet. To be honest, I don't really know what the plan was. You can't smoke gank a Marana mid unless she's wasted her leap or is very low HP. And same for the Puck, even if you find him. I'd rather just see this Chen focus on farming, get your levels up like we saw Fluff doing yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and then push in the mid game with Dragon Knights level 6 with the Prophet having some points in the trees. Uh, so far, Pandago had a good start in the jungle, but now he's getting very little done. Or he could just rotate top and push that lane. They have Basilius on MSS, but... Yeah. Trying to gank mid is a losing proposition. Radiance yeah, they should be able to knock down this attack. top tier 1 tower from Speed Gaming pretty easily already. Starting to pressure. Bone 7 will return to the lane. Is now level 3. Here so comes the backstab. Steps in the right direction, but Radiance there's the Nightmare. No phase shift. Not going to be able to hop to the orb, and this will be a first blood. Pandego going to be rewarded for his successful roam. That was a nice one, because if he comes with the Bane to top, then they have setup for the stop. But when he's just running around in the river, he's not going to get it done. Yeah. So... Better uh, gank opportunity and really well done by Amashi sleeping him right as the puck orbs out. Waits until the phase shift expires. Meanwhile, bottom lane though, Cake's in trouble. He just poured so it in. Gonna... No. Oh. Wow, that Lucent Beam and that Night Vision. Oh, the range on that. I don't know if they would have gotten that kill without Night Vision because might, they might not have been able to see him. So Lucent Beam coming into play there. Yeah, absolutely. Meanwhile, mid. That will Jeez, this, what is with this constant aggression every game? Every single game. Not and that many kills yet, though. Highlight Just die on the high ground. We'll bump right into Pandago. Level 3 Crystal Maiden does have all of the CCs needed. Marana hops forward. Arrow, Star Storm. That is a dead Chen. Now, Pylai die might not be out of the clear. Sing Sing will just head towards home. Pi with two hit points to spare. The Moonlight Shadow. Oh. There's another Breathe Fire. Can he find him, though? Is he getting juked? He's getting juked. There is a TP. I think wow. he's going to live. Pylai died with a great escape. He was down to one hit point. It doesn't get closer than that, LD. Well done. Yeah, that, that poison breath not fatal. So able to able to juke and live. And mm -hmm. You're not going to carry sentries early. And that's the power of early Moonlight Shadow. We do see a, quite a few players take two points an hour and skip it. But I think that's a mistake. Sing Sing, the, the master of Marana as of late. And I think mm -hmm. showing us just the power of that ult. Double damage rune spawning in the top position here at the six minute mark, and Sing Sing will bottle it up. So Marana, even a little bit more scary here in the next couple minutes. An explosive bit of damage that Sing Sing will be able to put out with that double damage rune. And a large mana pool. Looks like he is lining up for an arrow, perhaps. Oh, oh the plays! Oh. Wow, that was a long range arrow, double damage, and easy solo kill on Ryu Borez. <laughs> Sing Sing, <laughs> making Jesus it happen, it. Captain. But meanwhile, the courier almost fed because he was diving so deep that it <laughs> it ran like right here. It's taking the shortest path. Yeah. Would have been bad if he had fed it, but now he's got phase boots. Yeah. And he's just going to snowball. Yeah. And already level eight. EE e. actually bought a tower. bottle right here, which is sitting on the courier. Interesting. Is he using it himself? I'm not sure. It is headed his direction. He was the one that purchased it. Yeah, very interesting. It's he, a little unusual on Luna. He did go for an early Midas as well, so perhaps just looking for some regeneration here. Very strange though. She does use quite a bit of mana, but it's it's weird. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it works out. It's good if you find like a DD rune or you know an invis in the mid game, mm -hmm. but yeah, this landing stage looking very bleak for E Hug. Even though they had that first uh, that first gank on the top lane that worked out, Chen wasted quite a bit of time trying to gank mid, which was a very low percentage gank. Uh, they haven't kept Bone 7 out of the offlane, uh, and he's been getting levels. He's also been a nuisance. There will be a fight in the jungle here. Yeah, and looks like I'm a sheep will be the target of choice. Nightmare coming out on Aoi 2000, but not enough to keep the Bane alive. Oh, in comes the support for MSS, and they will turn it around, at least grab double kills coming out on the Visage and Marana, or pardon me, on the Crystal Maiden, but Marana was able to finish off the Bane. So E hug with a positive team fight there. Eternal Envy actually rotated into the mid lane as well. Yeah, two for one and both carries rotated, so definitely a win for E-Hug and something they need more of. But top lane is completely abandoned now, and this puck is getting quite a bit of experience. Yeah, this is the recovery that uh, Bone7 was looking for. Now going to be level six. He will be able to start moving around and ganking. If it pleases him, uh, that Dream Coil makes things a lot easier on that front.
Take a glance at the graphs here. Speed off to a very aggressive start. 2,000 gold, 2,500 experience. Bot, but yeah. I don't know if you want to dive for CM. Backup's coming. Moonlight Shadow. They will be able to finish him off. But down goes uh, the Dragon Knight. Cake's going to fall as well. Certainly not worth it for just a Crystal Maiden. Sheesh. EE -E was just in the right place there. Just yeah. happened to be right near the lane as they dive. and That was a bad dive. That yep. did not work out well for them. <laughs> Certainly not. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, MSS is rotated in to uh, keep it steady against Sing Sing, prevent him from the free farm. But Sing is in good shape. The net worth chart, both uh, Luna as well as Marana, topping the charts, which is a scary precedent uh, given that Luna does have an early Midas, the only Midas carrier in this match so far. Oh no. Playing against Sing Sing Marana is like playing against Dendi's Pudge. When he gets hot, it's you just you can't leave the towers. You're always worried about the threat of a gank. And yeah. well, they're going to set one up now. Didn't wait for the Frostbite, though, and that may cost them this kill. Ryu Bora is still in trouble. The Dream Coil comes out. Port's on the way. Dragon Knight will fall. Can Bone 7 survive? That is the question. He does have a phase shift waiting for the Illusory Orb, and he will survive. Crystal Nova. Those TPs took forever to arrive. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit too long. Yeah. So now Dragon Knight is in big trouble. Marana has been able to pick him off. Uh, what is his score? Has he died twice, That's three times? That's a Midas. That's a Midas, Marana. I mean, look at the net worth already just comparing the mids. 4.6k on the Marana, 2.1 on the Dragon Knight. If you get behind early to speed, you're in a lot more trouble than you are against other teams because they're greedy. So if you get behind them, they'll get Midas's early home of the Dominator on Luna. Yeah. And they will abuse that advantage. Whereas other teams... More often, like, say, Empire, maybe mm -hmm. they'll get one Midas, but they're content just to, you know, get a BKB on their carry, take a lot of early fights. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you're behind, it's hard to punish those early Midases. And E-Hug, they do have most of their key levels, but there's no items at all. They have level 7 on Dragon Knight. No treads, no drums, no BKB. Mm -hmm. Someone's being called a retard. In <laughs> I think in the 6th Broadcaster channel, I one, think, of, yeah. one of them is tagged up there, as There may be Arteezy lurking in there with the name Retard, and Bone7 is having some words, choice words with him. Yeah. Not confirmed, though. Every time I see Eternal Envy with this, I'm crumbling, the, I think of that Swedish saying, that she had a cake set, store du har, ok smular. It's like an old, like, pickup line that means, like, hey, cookie, are you crumbling? Directly translated. <laughs> That's all I can think of. It was, like, the first line my Swedish friends taught me. That's very obscure, but it is. <laughs> good saw, to know. I'm, he's crumbling, man. It's like cookies are crumbling. It's like she's crumbling under your, your manliness. Denied. Like a cookie. Yeah. No, I, I got it. All right. I'm with you. It's still weird, Dyer's though. Yeah. Though cookie attack. and biscuit are kind of weird. Dyer's they say biscuit to mean cookie, and when we say biscuit, they don't have a word for it. We they mean just call like it bread, bread, basically. Yeah, like a bread biscuit. Like a KFC biscuit, they would be confused. Here comes AUI with a DD rune, and if they get a kill bottom they can or mid, they can definitely take the tower. Yep, and it will be reserved for Sing Sing. Very close to level 11 as well. I wow. do like E-Hug's idea here to group up. They need the Dragon Knight to be a part of this, though, and it looks like he will TP top. No, stick here on bottom. Mm. If they're not grouping up and taking towers, then they're just getting out farm. So, yeah. I, when you give up double Midas, you give up this many kills, you got to do Radiant's something active on the map. And they try for it now with the smoke. They do a Fiend's Grip, but there's a lot of speed Dyer's heroes mid. There certainly middle are. Tower. Maybe they can find an opening. Chen is currently sitting level 6, so they do have Hand of God. They do have their key abilities. Nightmare used on the puck to start it off. I'm a sheep. Seems to be the target of choice. No Fiend's Grip happening today, boys. And this is looking bad for E-Hug. Pandego still stuck inside the Dream Coil. The Hand of God will be enough to keep him alive just in the nick of time, but Sing Sing has a double damage rune on. We'll have Arrow up in one second and might be able to secure another kill. Here comes the call down. Sing Sing's going to tank it. And that will be a two for nil as the engage peters off. Really seemed like Speed knew that gank was coming. They didn't actually have vision, but they had three heroes all parked mid, and Speed just not much they could do. <laughs> or uh, E Hug, not much they could do. They just ran up the hill into three, and that's pretty much it. And a nice deny from Nature's Prophet down in the bottom, but while all that was happening, E Sama wasn't even with him. He just pressured that bottom lane, continued soaking up the free farm, and he was also able to hit level 11 very quickly here. That is they, an early level 2 Eclipse. They did do one thing really well, which is they, they warded the Ancient. So even though he's had an early Dominator, I haven't. I don't know if he's stacked anywhere, but he certainly has not stacked the Ancients. Mm. Yeah. So that's very good news for E-Hug. They are stemming the bleeding a bit.
but they're still bleeding. They're still bleeding. Uh, gold lead now about 4,500 experience, very comparable, sitting around 5,000. And it's always bad when the team with the pushing lineup is getting out pushed. Only one tower down, and of course it is on in the favor of speed gaming. Arrow mid. Yeah, get a bash of creep in the face. Take that creep. Take that creep. EE -E is... I think this ogre... Mm. I don't think... It might die. Maybe not on this pull, but he'll have to go send it to heal afterwards. Attack. But he's going to find out soon his camp's warded, and then he'll probably start yelling at his team. <laughs> D-ward, please. Team, please. Yeah, almo almost died to the neutrals. Where's that micro? Should have frost armored it first. Dive Top tier one tower down. does fall in favor of E-hug. Yeah, they get their first tower kill. At least steps in the right direction. Make that gold graph loop down into their favor. They just need to do more of that. Smoke ganks are pretty dicey against elusive heroes who have Moonlight Shadow on their side, and mm -hmm. tower diving speed's really dangerous against so much... I mean, if Luna TPs in and eclipses you, and that's already a level 2 eclipse, yeah. you're probably getting wiped. If Puck coils you and then Luna comes in, you're screwed, and even if you catch someone, they can just uh, pop them around all. Oh. Highlight Eye just ran up the hill, and there's an Observer Ward here yeah, for that was e -hug and just melted. That was really Dyer's unfortunate. That was a fast kill. But fallen. space created, that mid-tier 1 tower does fall to the wrath of Sing Sing and Bone7, who, by the way, has now picked up his Blink Dagger here at the 14-minute mark. e -hug are going to try and Roche. Ugh, this is risky. They there's First of all, there's an Observer Ward mid, so if they go Roche right now, it's been spotted. Secondly, there's still a tier 1 up mid and bottom for the Radiant. Third, all of the di Radiant cooldowns are up, so this is a very dangerous fight. This is dangerous. But when the enemy team goes double Midas and they've got the better farming lineup, or at least equally good farming lineup, you have to be risky or you're just going to lose slowly okay. but surely. There's the long range arrow. They know what's going on. They got a glimpse of Roche. They see they have plenty of time to assemble. The ports come in there's and they will in the contest. River. They're going to see this. Are they going to contest? I thought they were. Looking for the uh, Aegis Snatch, perhaps. Dream Coil comes down. Roshan killed by the Dire. Aegis does go the way of Gyrocopter, but it won't be enough to keep the Bane alive. An instant buyback. Ryu Borez taking a lot of damage here. That'll be the end of the Dragon Knight. Sing Sing. Some return damage as well. Speed with a lot of low health heroes, but all five do survive. AUI had huge familiar stuns there. If he didn't hit, I think he had a double familiar stun, at least one on three heroes. They would have lost more. Envy is going to die bottom lane, though, and that's yeah. a big kill. So they give up Aegis, uh, and the Aegis is still up on the Gyro, and they use Eclipse. In fact, all their big cooldowns, and Envy dies. That's a big win for Ehug. Yeah, well, the Bane did also get picked off and bought back. So important to note, there was a... Two for one, but in still the net definitely worth, worth but, it. Yeah, absolutely. Radiant's bottom and Envy still has no attack. Ancient stack. His... What happened to his Frost... Ogre. I guess it might have died in that Radiant fight. Structures he sent divide. it back towards base, but I guess he ran it out at some attack. point and it died. But he doesn't have an Ancient Stack to fall back on, so... Early Dominator's Radiant's strong, but mostly if you use it to stack the woods and, and pull ahead in gold. Right. Otherwise, you'd rather just have the makings of a BKB. And this bottom Tier 1 tower does fall in favor of E-Hug. That uh, levels out the tower count. Two apiece. And they also pick up a Midas of their own. It is on the Nature's Prophet. Man, Pilot dies ballsy. <laughs> just running. And this reminds me of Fluff and stuff a few months, months back. Just running around in the enemy woods by himself. He's not using personal smokes, but aside from that, everything else fits the bill. And hoping to find somebody in the woods, but nobody's here just yet. And now they're going on bottom. Oh, oh Bone no. 7. Bone oh, seven. the Blink! Blink poured out. He'll make it. Fast wow, reaction. Wow, that right was there. quick reaction. And this is USE's too, but Ryu Boris gets caught in the river now, and he pops an invis as their detection. Doesn't there look not. like it. Everybody's yeah. dodging ganks. Yeah. So Morana has now gone for the DPS build. Uh, of course, that is the Maelstrom. And uh, Yasha already up on the Luna. So those Midases are starting to kick in. Gold Graph well, going in favor of Ehug following that Roche, but still st moving into their favor, but still on the side of Speed Gaming, who also have that uh, experience edge as well. Yeah, that Roche fight was big. I, I yeah. didn't think the go the graph would drop that much, but it's also because there hasn't been any Dyer's ancient stacking from Eternal Envy. Yeah. In fact, he still has not taken over a new creep, so I would like to see him do that soon. Still that singleton dragon attack. stack is E-Hug. Group up in the mid lane, knocking down this tier 1 tower. Radiant's that will be the last of the tier 1 towers for Speed Gaming, though. Speed are right there with a the response as they clear out the Radiant's last remaining tier 1 on the map. Now the race for the tier 2s. E-Hug with all five mid. Tower taking a lot of damage. Speed do not have a glyph available. 
And they are not going to port back to save it. This is not a good trade. E-Hug will clear the Tier 2 unchecked. Their Tier 2 up top taking a little bit of damage. They're a little indecisive here. Some here started running away like they wanted to defend the Tier 2, then the rest go in. But now it seems they settle on pushing high ground. And they've got Aegis for three minutes, BKB on the Gyro, no Glyph on speed. And they force the TPs back. Now they'll retreat. Yeah. That was well done. Right choice to move up to the high ground. And they also did a fair bit of damage to that tier 3 tower at the 17 minute mark. Doing about a third health. Really not too shabby. You know, the other thing is not only does Envy of Dominator, but AUI... Um, oh no, sorry, I'm getting my teams mixed up as well. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Pretend I didn't say that. Uh, uh, Gyrocopter's BKB is up. That is good news. And Dragon Knight working towards his BKB also. Of course, has that Ogre Club. Eh, about halfway to the rest of the pieces. Hmm. E-Hug's looking surprisingly solid. I, I thought they'd just get rattled after the way the lighting stage starts, but there was that point where they said, you know what, we need to take a risk, take an objective, and do it as a team, because that's where we're strongest, with the BKB Gyro and with Chen in the early to mid game. So even though some of their early game execution was lacking, their overall strategy seems solid, and yeah. I think that's really important for an up-and-coming team. If you don't have good leadership, you're, you, and, you, and you can't fall back on superior individual skill, you're just going to fall apart. Yeah. So, promising even though they're down right now. Need to build that solid foundation. A good strategy is a good strategy, even if not executed perfectly. So, I think you're definitely right about that. They're not out of the clear yet, though. Luna is still out of control in oh, the way of farm. Are you Bora is going to try and pour it out? Not going to happen. A long range arrow will interrupt it. Freezing field, star storm. And that is a the dead dragon knight. Crystal Maiden going to walk away one kill richer. Meanwhile, Familiars get ganked top. Uh, E-Hug will get a little gold back their way, but you'd much rather have the DK, and boy, has he had a rough game. Ryu Boras, 0-6, only one assist. He got some hate early, but he's also yeah. been caught out a lot, overextending. Mm, definitely not his best game. Certainly not. And with that, Luna now going to have a Manta style as E.E. -E crumbling down some Ancients. So they need to do something to slow down this Luna. I think Ehog are in good shape aside from Eternal Envy because his farm, if I get to the net worth chart, is just out of control. He's 3k up on the Gyrocopter who is the leading farmer for Ehog. And that's just scary. If he's already that far ahead, has had the Midas for this long, only at the 20 minute mark, Ehog really need to knock down these remaining towers and they need to break the base before Luna just gets out of control as he is about to hit 16 and that level 3 Eclipse will make their team fighting presence a bit more, uh, well, good for... They're so using, using Moonlight Shadow to go on bottom now. MSS has BKB. Is he going to pop it first? No, he'll pop Aegis. Well, they lose Aegis. He doesn't die here, but... Oh, they stuck around. I thought they were just going to back. Moonlight Shadow about to expire. Mirana will leap backwards. Pylai die, looking for some fog. He will port out. MSS not going to have the damage. Sing, oh, sing. he was oh. mid cast animation. Both heroes were the Bane and the Dragon Knight, but Ryu Bora's I'm a Sheep Sucks just a little bit too late. Yeah, and remember, this is with Envy not stacking as much as he could have. He's still really fat. 13,000 gold. Now he's got Manta. One more item away from being very hard to deal with in the fights. Compare that to the Gyro. He's got 3.3k, but he's not going to keep up in farm for much longer. Yeah. Mjolnir now picked up on the Marana. So Sing Sing going for some high DPS items as E-Hug do pressure the bottom tier 2 tower. Glyph going to be popped by speed. They're going to use their mech already. That is another disparity in these team fights. There is not a mech up on there's speed game. There's a coil game. here, and remember, there's no Aegis. Yeah. This is scary. If they want to defend, I think they could, but Radiance they're going to leave. Tower. Instead, they're going to split attack. push. They Radiance will put Aoi as well as Sing in the mid lane, pressuring the tier two, Dyer's and up top, tower. Luna will be able to finish off that tower. So at least they trade tier two for tier two and might be able to get a favorable exchange if they knock down that mid tower. Bane, the lone defender. Oh, Chen on the retreat, but he might get caught trying to run. Uh -oh. No, nope. He'll be nope. okay. Everyone's going to make it out. There's actually a four staff here. In theory, Pilot Eye could die for this, but that's he doesn't have backup, so not going to happen. It could converge mid on Ryu Borez. <laughs> well, they will just finish the tower instead. AUI just like, walked in with five heroes, four heroes missing and calmly snipes the tower. It's a bold visage. He knew that, knew, I guess maybe he knew there was no glyph, although it was about to cool down, but yeah. Speed Gaming, the masters of dodging fights. They only fight when they want to, and teams have a very hard time forcing them to fight. Yeah. The one time that they fought at Roche, they didn't really have to, and it cost them heavily. I think Speed Gaming's best when they just dodge fights until the late game, generally. 
Ehug are in good shape right now, but I fear they're starting to lose a little bit of their pushing momentum. Usually that 30 minute mark is a good just blanket benchmark time for if you have a, a strat that relies heavily on pushing against a heavy farming team, really need to start breaking the base. So they're still in good shape, but they got to keep this pressure on LD. Yeah, you'd like to see more farm. You'd like to see MSS with an MKB by now for sure. Yeah. Um, given like basically a free farm lane top and considering they have five towers and they took Roche, his CS is 130, which is not bad, but I mean, compared to Envy, 210 CS mm -hmm. at 23 minutes. Part of it's also on the team to stack Ancients consistently for him, and they do have Chen Creeps and Profit Trance to do that, but that's just something that comes with more time and practice. Like, Alliance was really good at about that in 6.78, but they also had almost a year, a solid year of dedicated practice together. It's just that, that next level of polish that takes a while to yeah. accomplish, I guess. But here comes a big smoke. All five smoked up for speed gaming. They will rotate across the Ancients. Now the Moonlight Shadow used for good measure. Pandago oh going to walk right into it. Oh, that's got to be a what? jarring effect. <laughs> he will him. still fall. Ryu Bora is in big trouble. This is a disaster for E-Hug. Right now, Gyrocopter still alive. But for how long? A matter of seconds, it would appear. There's the Frostbite. A four for nil exchange. Speed keep all of them alive. That was hilarious. He just ran into five and then... They, they wanted to find a better target than Chen, so like, eh, let's see if somebody else is around. They're like, okay, we'll take the Chen. Nature's Prophet lived. will try to rat Dota up in the top lane, but I don't know how successful his efforts will be as speed do move towards the base. I don't feel like this Prophet hasn't really gotten much done this game. Cakes, he was pretty slow in the jungle. 1-2-1, one, one, hasn't joined a lot of fights. He joined his team for some pushes, but when you pick a Prophet, a DK, and a Chen, you really... I don't know. You want to try and force fights at the enemy tier 1 safe lane pretty early on. TP in the Prophet after you take mid with Chen and DK. And the Prophet should have more farm at this stage of the game. At, there was a, For lo most of the game, he's been equal to or behind the puck. And in fact, he still is. Like, compare the two There's offlaners. A stick at least. Yeah, that could be a game changer. But so far, if you compare the two offlaners, Bone 7 has gotten a lot accomplished and this Prophet very little. Yeah, absolutely right. And Speed Gaming following that fight did manage to clear out the, I think it was just a double stack here, but they did take out the E-Hug Ancient stack, which is a decent swing. Unfortunate for Speed is they did poke into the Roche pit when he was maybe 20 seconds left on his respawn timer, so from their perspective, they just checked it, Roche is down. Little do they know, he has respawned and E-Hug are actually posturing around the pit, possibly looking for an opening. Oh boy, we need a router restart now. We were lucky with pauses on the first two days. Today, we are not so lucky. Those routers. Well. It's been a rough day for pauses, folks. We've had a, an array of momentum killers in these games. It's always I always feel a little bit... Um, it's the right word. Like, my cadence gets put off when there's a pause and you have to sort of calm down, find some way to break up the the monotony, and then whenever there's that resume, I have that feeling of, wait, what's happening in this game again? Let's get a recap. That's loser talk. That's that's loser talk. <laughs> as, as my good friend Ben Wu would tell me. <laughs> uh, speaking yeah, of it's, Ben it's Wu. Tr it's true. It does take you out of the flow of the yeah. game a bit. Speaking of Ben Wu, that 24-hour stream, I imagine he's uh, fast asleep right now, but... I think it was a success. Maybe some of those BTS viewers were enjoying All Night Marlini last night. Who wouldn't enjoy Marlini All Night? <laughs> oh, ho, ho. I really want to know if someone donated that $10,000 for a... Uh, I feel like we would have seen some news about it. That would probably be front page on Reddit. <laughs> I was hoping that there'd be a nice romantic getaway weekend, but... Oh, He's a very expensive prostitute. <laughs> As LD refreshes the subreddit, just to double check. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just make sure here that there isn't a hot date waiting for Merlini. Looks like we wow, will that's resume. a quick router restart. Yeah, it certainly was. Very quick. Okay. I was I was like... Those e-hug routers. Getting ready to go, you know, get something to drink, take a nap. <laughs> we're, we're right back in it. So no discombobulation for you, buddy. Yeah. All right. Still fresh. So anyhow, Roche has respawned. That is the... Uh, the big news here in this match, though it is warded up on both sides, so both teams should be pretty aware if anyone moves in. We see a Triant just scouting it out. A ping coming out from Speed Gaming. It was either purple or blue. I can't tell the difference, but someone on the Radiant pinged Roche. So they're at least suspicious. Wow. Sanjin Yasha, Mial, Nurmurana. 
It's an definitely unorthodox. An interesting build. And also the this egg This is the I'm really on. far ahead, guys. Owie. But they do find a turtle envy, and he gets stomp, and he gets feeds grip. He does have satanic manta. Can they focus him down? This will be a huge kill. They get him. Oh, E.E. Sama getting so a little greedy. greedy. So greedy. Nobody there on his team, aside from Crystal freaking Maiden. <laughs> and there was Moonlight Shadow, but I would not have mattered. There were two dusts on E-Hug, so. Yep. EE, -E. pride cometh before the fall, my friend. And now, E Hug, they want to take Roche. This is a good opportunity oh, for it. Is there a buyback for Eternal Envy? There oh, certainly is. Dude, he's rich. Of course there's a buyback. He's loaded. Oh, what kind of a question was that? So Manta, Satanic, and But forcing more than the enough. buyback is pretty big. The key thing is if he buys back, get the hell away, because you don't want to fight. Yeah, absolutely. So, Roche going to go down very slowly. E Hug don't have the fastest Roche team, and Speed Gaming. Will posture around the pit, and Luna does buy back. Oh, three hero coil. That could be big. Now the Hex coming through, but they force that bone seven. Now he runs back into the cooldown. Is it enough to kill him? Not just yet. Oh. Ryubor is still alive. He gets self-sprouted oh. by his own teammate. Oh, but they were sending him back. So just trying to juke the vision of speed. But now they're on the run. They have no cooldown, no BKB. Uh, on the Actually, DK still hasn't finished his. Never mind that. Gyro has his, but still this is a speed rush, and that's... Very unfortunate. Yep, they will indeed kill Roche in a very timely manner, LD. They did force his buyback, but eh, ages for a buyback still worth it. Yeah, I think so. So now speed in good shape. They will press forward and perhaps chip away at the base. We'll see where they want to go from here. They're looking like they want some aggression. Though MKB now completed on the gyrocopter, so he's hitting hard and he's starting to hit fast. It's a good item, but when there's a Satanic on Envy, the only way they kill him is if the Fiend's Grip actually gets off for close to full duration. Yeah, they killed him in the woods, but that was because there's nobody else there to cancel it. But uh -oh. Pandago. Uh oh, they're going to come up from the low ground. Oh, a fatal mistake. That will be the end of E Hug as we know it in this match. DK, as well as <laughs> the LD facepalm. Well, that no, wasn't really uh, a facepalm, it was just like, ouch. The, the oh, LD. The humanity. A moment of silence, maybe, is it better? Just yeah, it's just like oh boy. Respect. I think oh. we. I think they lost, guys. <laughs> Pretty sure he hugs out of this one. That was just a disaster. You could see Speed Gaming at the top of the hill, just waiting for it, hoping E Hug would poke Dino up into their jungle. And boy, did they win on that gamble. Yeah. Even though the gyro's back, I don't. It's not gonna matter. Yeah. Ryubora is gonna get dropped like he's hot. Gyrocopter. He'll pop his BKB. Does a fair bit of damage. They're still satanic here though, and. I, they may have to back. I guess that's the good news. Yeah, they will repel, but that is still a huge, huge misstep. I mean, speed are already ahead, and that just furthers. Now, a, about a 20,000 experience lead, and... Uh, They're all so low, but two gems get dropped by CM. She was balling out of control. <laughs> AUI will settle for one. Oh, Cakes. there's RTK the Moonlight TP. Shadow. Okay, will they survive? Looks like Owie might make it out. He's a piggy, but an invisible piggy at that. A gem. And he's waiting. Arog's going to connect from Sing Sing from long range, but they will defend. So in the end, they lost Crystal Maiden, and they lost one of their two gems. No, they got both of them back, actually. Bone 7 grabbed the other. Okay. So, yeah, look at that. Two gems. Jeez. Small stroke of luck, perhaps. They all have lived. Like, they're so close to dying, but e -Hug just could not finish anyone off. And most importantly, I think Speed Gaming still have the Aegis in tow. So they can really just do that again, put Envy in the front lines, and, well, rinse and repeat. Yeah, in the end, I'd speed gaming, it looked like they wanted to just end the game right there, but much better to go base, heal up, and now go down mid again. This time around, uh, the there is no glyph available for E-Hug, yeah. and they they should wait 20 seconds for Eclipse, yeah, and yep. then they'll have Eclipse, and uh, no glyph, and they should be able to break the base. Yeah, absolutely. E-E still with a lot of gold in the bank, so about 4k right now. So his buyback's still on cooldown, but plenty of money to play around with. And they are going to press forward. Puck actually very close to the sheep stick. About 200 in the bank. Just needs that mystic staff. So it won't be too far off. Yeah, blink hex on Puck is really game breaking. Yeah. Because he, he's one of the few hex carriers that can almost always live. Where like if Prophet TP's in hexes, he's dead. But with Puck not the case, they're going to go for a grip on Envy. But instantly Bone 7 cancels it. Drops the silence. Drops the coil. And everybody melts. Yep, only three left, and it, or two left now. Dragon Knight as well as Nature's Prophet. This tier three tower taking heavy damage, as is Ryu Borez. A four for nil exchange. This will be the end of the mid lane of Rax. 
And I think we could be moments from GG here, LD. Speed Gaming looking good for game number one. Ehawk definitely had their moments, and I think they're very, they seem pretty calm under pressure. It's just the lanes were started way too poorly for them. Yeah. DK mid against Mirana isn't really that one sided, but Sing Sing just played really well in the matchup. That long range arrow that yeah. to get that solo kill was the turning of the tides. That was uh, that was just like the moment, the backbreaker. Dyer's yeah, middle. they'd already gotten the first blood earlier, and yeah, they went double Midas. Dyer's it was fairly unpunished all game attack. long. I think E Hug pretty much didn't make any huge strategic errors, and I didn't mind their draft. It was just the Chen's wasted Radiant some time Titan. early. The execution wasn't quite as crisp as it needed to be, um, and it seemed like. Seemed like they were a little unsure of themselves at times. Like when they push mid, it looked like they're going to back. Then they're like, no, we need to keep on pushing and force TPs. So overall, they made mostly the right decisions. Just execution is lacking. Yep. But uh, I think that's promising for most NA teams have like struggle from pretty questionable strategic decisions. Yeah. And really good individual skill. Yeah, Ryu it's Boras. Nice to see a team that's fairly disciplined. Yeah, Ryu Boras is the one standout player that you actually mentioned as has really been making big plays, oh. and he was picked on hard this game, and he ended 0-9 and 2, a very low impact at Dragon Knight. Very unfortunate for him. Maybe that could be a viable strategy. Pick on their mid player. He tends to be, um, I would almost want to say an S4 comparison, where he seems to be sort of a staple presence in the team. He's the playmaker, helps set up initiations, and if you keep him yeah. down, it throws the rest of the team in disarray. Yeah, I want to see more out of Cakes. Uh, I felt like he was a complete non-factor this game as well. And yeah. maybe that was the profit, just not being a good matchup. But uh, he has not gotten much done the past few games. So yeah. Ryu Boars with an off game. If if your mid player is having an off game, the rest of the team needs to step up. And they just couldn't yeah. do it. But All it's right. a best of three. Best of three. They've got a small margin for error. One game away from elimination. But this best of three will continue on in just a moment, folks. A short break coming up. Game two up next.